Here with this week's hottest stories in the investment world, this is Zach's Friday Finish Line. Hello and welcome to the Zach's Friday Finish Line. I'm Ryan McQueenie, a content writer here at Zach's, along with a special guest filling in for Maddie, a member of our content intern team, Ben Rains. Thanks for having me, Ryan. I'm sure the Friday Finish Line listeners will miss Maddie just as much as we are here at the writing team. But she's off on a well-deserved vacation, so we'll just have to do the best we can without her. Yeah, we'll try. Um, It's definitely been an interesting week for Maddie to be gone, too. Uh, Well, with the the imminent nuclear war and everything. Um, (laughs) I I kid, of course, but uh, investors around the world did take a cautionary pause this week with the recent developments between the U.S. and North Korea. Yes, we've had uh, reports of North Korea finally having nuclear ICBMs on the way. That's a good. I love. That's one of my favorite acronyms, by the way. In yeah, continent, intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missile. That's scary. It is very, very scary phrase. That the fact that it can be used in <laughs> just four letters and yeah. people know it so well. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, and President Trump threatening uh, to rain fire and fury down on the regime. Poetic. Then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Poetic and. That's all you can say. Poetic. Uh, And further details of North Korea's plans to launch missiles in the direction of Guam, where the U.S. has a military base. Uh, It's been, well, a a scary week for some, uh, as tensions between the longtime foes appear to be at a breaking point. Yeah, well said, Ben. Uh, But we're going to have to remember here before we get into a geopolitical debate, uh, we are a financial news show. The, mine, the markets did pull back a bit this week, seemingly in response to this drama, at least to an extent. Uh, but there's plenty of more news to cover. And uh, Ben, I'm thinking let's start off with the details of Blue Apron's first ever earnings report. Yeah, Ryan. Uh, poor Blue Apron. Uh, they've had a rough go of it so far. Going public right as Amazon bought Whole Foods. Uh, just and launched their yeah, own meal kit delivery yeah, just, service. Yeah, just, that was bad timing. Just feel you feel sort of bad, but I mean, how bad can you feel for a company that went public? Uh, some of the people are going to have a good time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> true. Uh, the newly public meal kit delivery company failed to satisfy investors as the stock sunk to new lows. As a result, Blue Apron recorded revenue of two. $138 million in the quarter, which actually beat our consensus as consensus estimate of $235 million. However, higher than expected costs took a massive chunk out of the company's bottom line. The Zach's consens- consensus estimate called for a loss of $0.30 cents per share, but Blue Apron reported a loss of $0.47 cents per share, which was far below our mark. The company cited unexpected costs relating to the launch of new manufacturing facility in New Jersey. For much of this disappointment, uh, although investors also appear to be concerned about marketing costs, Blue Apron spent about 14.5% of its revenue on marketing expenses in the latest quarter, which is down from 18% level that it recorded in 2016. However, management noted that its clients, its, its client its client base shrank 9% from the first quarter to the second quarter due to a reduction in marketing costs. Certainly not a hot start for Blue Apron, which has watched its share play steadily decline since its late June IPO. And Thursday's new low of $5.03 per share marked a 49.7% drop from its IPO price. Basically halved since its yeah. IPO uh, a little over a month ago. That's not a good start, as you said. Um, yeah, I, I, I think my, my interesting thing to note there is the, uh, drop due to unexpected costs associated with the new manufacturing facility in New Jersey. Um, I think a lot of people rolling their eyes at that, uh, you're going to get on your first ever earnings call and say, we didn't know how much it was going to cost to start a new plant. Uh, you seem really inexperienced. Yeah, uh, yeah. How did you go public? The cr- yeah, you have exactly. no idea how much it costs to manufacture your product. Yeah, so the, <laughs> the existing critique is we went public too early and your, your first call to investors is to tell them that you didn't know how much uh, it was going to cost to start this plant in New Jersey. It seems inexperienced, amateur. Um I don't know. I don't yeah, want to be too that, tough on them. You like you said it was it was weird timing with yeah, with but it, new it it is a weird 
a weird thing to happen in the the first time you're you're reporting is that we didn't really know yeah how much things that we do cost, cost all. <laughs> so we were pretty off on that more than we expected yeah which is not and good. i mean i was looking at it today so 16.5 million shares were traded today their average volume is 6.2 million so people were really Hammering blue apron. Yeah, today. getting getting out in a hurry. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So I want to actually shift gears here to another uh, newly public company. We're going from a first ever earnings report to a second ever earnings report. This is, of course, Snap Inc., the makers of Snapchat. Snap uh, also failed to satisfy investors. Uh, what do you know? Uh, Snap missed earnings estimates. The company posted a loss of thirty six cents per share. Missing the Zach's consensus estimate, which called for a loss of $0.29 cents per share. Revenue estimates were also lower than expectations. The company saw revenue figures of one point eight, or excuse me, sorry, $181.67 million. Uh, this missed our consensus estimate of $186.91 million. Uh, so quite a significant earnings and revenue miss. Daily active users were up 21% year over year to 173 million. Uh, decent growth, but uh, interesting to note that that 173 million mark is still well below uh, the much younger uh, Instagram Stories audience. Uh, Snap said that it added about 7.3 million daily active users in the second quarter, marking 4% sequential growth. Uh, average average revenue per user was a dollar and five cents. That's uh, up 109 percent year over year and 16 percent quarter over quarter. So one of the kind of uh, to one of the lone highlights of the report. However, hosting costs per daily active user were 61 cents. That was up from 55 cents in the prior year quarter and 60 cents in the first quarter of 2017. Total costs and expenses climbed to $630.7 million. Uh, that's up significantly from $187.7 million that the company spent last year. Um, down significantly sequentially now that they uh, got rid of those, had, didn't have those IPO costs to worry about. Uh, but still not great performance. It was down about 10% in after hours on Thursday afternoon. Um, another disappointing quarter for Snap, another company that has seen its share price steadily decline since its IPO. Um, and as disappointing as the quarter was, the only thing I'll say about it, the only, the only you know, positive shake I'll give it is it was going to take a miracle to satisfy anyone anyway, because, you know, I feel like over the past month or two, uh, Investor and analyst sentiment has has really gone down the tank here for Snap, um, and so I think company, you know, critiquing Blue Apron's management a second ago, Snap's management, Evan Spiegel and the boys will have uh, a lot of work to hear to do, uh, not just to get his company performing better, but to uh, kind of right that sentiment ship as well. Yeah. That's just my take on yeah, it. Yeah, and, that, and it, it certainly doesn't help that. Instagram basically is just doing better than them, doing exactly what yeah. Snapchat did in the first place. So yeah. they've just taken all of the good ideas Snapchat yeah. has and just incorporated in their own app. Yeah, it's like the <laughs> it's like from Annie that anything you can do, I can do better. That's from Annie, right? I think. I don't I've know. Seen I that. just think of it as My the Michael Jordan would be commercials. Disappointed. I've seen that on Broadway or off Broadway, but anyway. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. We're going to go uh, into more earnings here. This time uh, doing a little uh, industry recap. Ben, uh, give us the rundown on retail earnings this week. Yeah, it's been a tough go for retail, as everyone knows at this point. Uh, but the storyline continued today as the sector took a hit once again as e-commerce companies and online selling powerhouse. Amazon continue to put the squeeze on the brick and mortar retail sector. Shares of several major U.S. department store chains plummeted on Thursday after Macy's and several other retail players reported. Macy's reported earnings of $0.48 cents per share, which beat the Zacks estimate of $0.45 cents per share. The company posted revenue of $5.55 billion, beating our Zacks estimate of $5.5 billion. Still, the revenue figure marked a 5.4% 
4% decline year over year and establish same source sales were down 2.8%. Shares of Macy's were down more than 10.5% on Thursday. The struggling retail power hit a new 50 Two week intraday trading low. A brutal, uh, a brutal yeah. day for Macy's. Yeah, it's just just not going well for them. Uh, on to somebody else though. Kohl's reported today as well. They reported earnings of a dollar and twenty four cents per share, beating the Zacks estimate of a dollar and nineteen cents per share, up forty nine percent from the year ago period. The company posted revenues of four point one four billion, which beat the Zacks estimate. Kohl's revenues fell, however, by 0.9% year over year. The department store chain's comparable store sales were down 0.4% as well, which is actually up 2.7%, which is up from the 2.7% decline the company experienced in the first quarter. Still, despite some signs of improvement, shares of Kohl's fell about 6% on Thursday. Another retail power, uh, relatively unknown in this area, at least, I feel like, is Dillard's. Yeah, we don't have any in Chicago. That's <laughs> a good point. I don't think I've ever seen one, actually. Yeah. I have the, I have, um, I was going to say I've had the unfortunate experience of shopping in Dillard's, but that I think gives you a sign <laughs> of what uh, these brick and mortar department stores are like these days. Um, I don't know. I mean, they're certainly not doing as poorly as Sears, but I would put the, ex- the shopping experience on the same level. Although, like, I'm not their target audience. So Yeah, yeah. That's what we I? always have to think about is yeah. that the younger generation, they're not even trying to sell to us. Which is part anymore, of the problem. So, yeah. Part of the problem. But exactly. If whatever. you don't have young people getting in there, not a good thing. But uh, yeah, so Dillard's also uh, disappointed investors today with a quarterly loss of $0.58 cents per share, coming in well below last year's figures. And shares sunk over 15% on Thursday. I wanted to add a little positive note to the end of this retail roundup. Uh, Nordstrom posted better than expected earnings on Thursday afternoon. Um, those reports were the Thursday morning reports and then Nordstrom came in Thursday afternoon. Um, shares were up, uh, a little over one and a half percent right after the release of the report. It'd be interesting to watch on Friday, whether those gains maintain or whether the kind of disappointing results elsewhere will drag down Nordstrom as well. Um, it, it was interesting to kind of see that one, uh, one diamond in the rough though, investors, uh put Nordstrom in the green after hours uh, in what was a very, very difficult day for retail. Um, NVIDIA, moving on to NVIDIA, an investor favorite and a favorite of the Friday finish line, also reported on Thursday afternoon. Uh, NVIDIA absolutely crushed earnings and revenue estimates. Uh, The company posted earnings of $0.92 per share, which beat the Zach's consensus estimate of $0.69 per share. The company saw revenue figures of uh, $2.23 billion, which beat our estimate of $1.95 billion. Total revenues were up 56% year over year. GAAP profits gained 124%, while non-GAAP earnings swelled 91%. Decent guidance, too, for the third quarter. NVIDIA expects revenue to be $2.35 billion, give or take 2%. Our current consensus estimate is calling for revenue of $2.14 billion. So this guidance is uh, definitely on the high end of our revenue at, or our current consensus revenue estimate. Uh, the company also said they expect gap and non-gap gross margins to be 58.6% and 58.8% respectively strong margins uh, in the often uh, difficult uh, tech sector. I um, wanted to point out a couple quotes uh, by NVIDIA's CEO, uh, Jensen Huang, which I'm 100% sure I'm mispronouncing, <laughs> but I don't, I'm not good with names <laughs> as the listeners of the show know. Uh, he said in the report, quote, Adoption of NVIDIA GPU computing computing is accelerating, driving growth across all of our businesses. 
Data center revenue increased more than two and a half times. A growing number of car and robot taxi companies. Let me re- 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 rewind there a little bit here. <laughs> a growing number of car and robot taxi companies. That's the term we're going for. Sounds fun. Robot taxis. <laughs> I want to keep my quote good, though. So, uh, a growing number of car and robot taxi companies are choosing our Drive PX self driving computing platform. And in gaming, increasingly the world's most popular form of entertainment. We power the fastest growing platforms, GeForce and Nintendo Switch, end quote. None of that should really be a surprise to uh, NVIDIA investors. Uh, That's kind of the bread and butter of the company right now. I just thought the phrasing of robot taxi companies was interesting because I guess like that's a pretty good way to put it when we talk about these, you know, Uber and Lyft of the world investing in self-driving cars um you know that's kind of google's plan as well with waymo i i I just i personally have never used the phrase robot taxi company so that was an interesting thing to see um i also wanted to highlight this other quote though um he said quote nearly every industry industry and company is awakening to the power of ar ai our new volta gpu the most complex processor ever built delivers a 100-fold speed up for deep learning beyond our best GPU of four years ago, end quote. So that's just underscoring the insane and uh, rapid growth of machine learning, deep learning, AI over the past few years and just really highlighting uh, what we're capable of, what NVIDIA's technology is capable of doing uh, right now, which is is really impressive stuff. Um, We've said on the show before Guests have said on the show before that NVIDIA is becoming the number one AI pure play in the world. Uh, It it is, you know, before these other things that, you know, have really driven its growth to this point, this gaming, um, you know, self-driving cars, uh, which is kind of related in a way, if you will, as far as with AI. it is really becoming a very, very popular artificial intelligence pick and people, investors everywhere looking at it as a, uh, as the kind of the number one AI stock pick right now. Um, interesting, interesting results, impressive results. Um, interesting to note, however, that in after hours trading, uh, NVIDIA down as much as 5%. Um, there was a, slight bounce back it'll be actually interesting to see what happens throughout the day on friday um and what happens kind of uh you know on the other side of uh the weekend into next week as we see what this post earnings momentum does um the immediate reaction though from the market was a negative one so uh one of those one of those curious uh post earnings moves but um Something that I think a lot of investors will be hoping is just a another opportunity to buy at a discount. Um, either way, I think that just about does us does it for us this weekend. Ben, did you have anything anything you wanted to add about the uh, current state of geopolitical drama? You know, uh, how do you feel no, about the nuclear really. deterrent? <laughs> we're we're gonna get into a metaphysical debate about. Uh, nuclear weapons no we're not (laughs) good (laughs) Um, if you want us to though or if you feel like we missed anything uh, this week feel free to shoot us an email at podcast at zax.com you can also check out all of our other exclusive audio content at zax.com slash podcasts Uh, remember to subscribe and leave us a rating thanks again for joining us we will see you next time on the zax friday finish line